What's up, everybody? We back. R2C2. Another week. What's good? Hey, we promised our audience that even though our relationship with The Ringer has ended, nothing would change for them and their listening habits. Because really, it's about the consumer, right? We want to make sure that you guys have the same pattern listening. And here you are on a Thursday morning getting your episode of R2C2 as you will eventually We'll have a new home, more details on that to come. But in the meantime, we're just going to keep recording uh, with our incredible crew of Sadie Zillow and Atta. I got to get Atta's last name pronunciation down, see, because, I mean, it's, um, it, it's, a, it's, it's a lot. We, uh, we got our crew. We're going to be recording every Thursday as usual, and uh, we'll have bonus episodes as well. Of course, people know... They can listen to our pod wherever they get their podcast on the same exact RSS feed that they've been using. Um, and uh, they also are going to be able to get the full episodes on YouTube, full episodes on our YouTube page. So make sure you check that out. Um, but uh, yeah, man, we're, we're still cooking. See, you ready to go? Oh, yeah. Locked in. <laughs> um, I'm over here. I'm watching. I'm watching the match right now. I'm oh, like, you are? You're yeah, into it, huh? I'm, I'm into it, man. It's crazy watching... Uh, you know, I like to watch, like, golfers that are not good. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds you of someone you know? <laughs> exactly. I love it. I love it. Like, I'm watching, they're playing the wind course that I played there a couple of, uh, like, in April. And they're hitting yeah. shots from the shit that I was hitting it out of, so it's good. <laughs> the win in Vegas? The win in Vegas, yeah. The wind is course in Vegas is nice, bro. Is it super hot there now, though? Uh, I don't think it's, like, crazy hot yet. Gotcha. Um, I was down in in Dallas over the weekend, and it, it wasn't too too hot yet yeah. out, out west. So this shows you how messed up I am. Okay, I was in what? Vegas a week ago for a WNBA game. I know exactly what the temperature is, and yet I just <laughs> forgot. Like it was it was eighty two and delightful. Oh yeah, like, there yeah, you go. Yeah. So it's, Tom Brady's playing in pants right now, so it's nice. Yeah, yeah. I can answer my own question. Uh, maybe. Um, I'll forget the question by the time I, I try and answer one again based on what my memory just showed there. But <laughs> I uh, I have been there recently. That's funny, though. See, I've never watched one of those match things. But you remember during COVID when they did the first one and it was like like any little bit of sports <sighs> that you got felt like the greatest relief and release. Yeah, it was crazy. huh? Like we were just starving for anything. So any little thing that we can get, whether it was bubble basketball or <laughs> yeah. the match or just anything, man, it was, uh, it was crazy times to think about where we were, you know, as, as like sports fans. See, do you remember what the first thing I did was that was like play by play ish? You did uh, basketball, right? Well, I did all the like WNBA games. We did them from the Bristol studio. I did a ton of games because we had a ton of inventory. Yeah, you did them from I, the studio. Yeah, in Bristol. But no, the first thing I did was we did a Peloton race. We did two Peloton races on ESPN. I don't know if you remember this with like a bunch of famous people, like no, athletes, golfers. I've never yeah. seen that. So like Rory McIlroy. Um, uh, During COVID? Yeah, yeah, we had. Oh, I missed that, guys. Uh, Justin Thomas. Um, yeah, we had a bunch of. Uh, Booger McFarland was in that race. Really? Uh, yeah, that was man. At, that was at the height of my fucking uh, my physical peak too. I should have been in that shit. Hey, you would have crushed, man. How, <laughs> we, ha, have things gone downhill? I'm no, I just No, I just haven't been working out. Like I'm, I don't oh, have okay. as much muscle. I'm still the same size. I just don't have as much muscle. Gotcha. You've been eating like more ice cream and stuff? Or no, no, I, I haven't. Yeah. My, my diet's actually been pretty good. That's why I'm the okay. same size. But good. I just I just haven't found time to work out. Who knew that I was going to be fucking, this MLB thing was going to be like a real fucking job, because like it's a real job. It really is, huh? It really, it really is, guys. <laughs> what do we think about that? Are we, are we ready for that? Are no, we okay I'm good. With that? I'm good. Yeah, you know, I'm learning. I'm learning okay. the office ropes. Yeah, you know, I'm sending emails and shit. I got my Outlook set up on my iPad so I can know where I'm supposed to be, and it's uh, it's working itself out. It's good. CC Sabathia has his Outlook set up on you his see that? iPad yeah, for his bro, like... job. Now I can I can keep my own schedule. I don't have to Amber to fucking keep all my schedule th- uh, and shit. Now I can just keep it right wow. on my fucking. We can go through you iPhone. now. Nope, nope. Oh, definitely, okay, okay. definitely well, don't well, go through me. No, right. Like, let's, sorry, Sadie let's Zillow. Let's not get crazy, bro. Let's not get oh, crazy. Oh my gosh, Sadie I'm, should get hazard pay for trying to coordinate our schedules. Oh my god, it's, it's crazy. It is and, crazy. And now it's that I, I feel like now that I work, I answer the phone less, even less than I did before. 
Yeah, <laughs> it feels what? that way. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> I think that's. I think that's right. I think poor, poor Sadie can attest to that as well. Oh my god! Oh no. <laughs> my gosh! It's so funny, man. Well, hey, there's a million fun things going on. We also got a bunch of good questions, mailbag wise. See, I just I want to start here. Um, there are two things at the top of my mind. Number one, a few weeks ago on the pod. We talked about how Bo Jackson was your guy. Uh huh. Bo, Bo Jackson was your favorite athlete. You were obsessed with Bo. We talked about how we got to get him on the pod at some point. Like, and I was stunned that you had never met Bo. Never and met him. That changed today. This morning. Yeah. I got a chance to meet him at the MLB office. He was there, um, you know, just talking about some things about the game and, you know, maybe joining on as an ambassador role and things like that. And it was crazy, man. Like, I didn't get to, like, all the way fan out, you know what I'm saying? Because we were in a meeting. But yeah. I did show him my, my tattoo. Did you? <laughs> Hell yeah, that I is, did. Like, I rolled my pants awesome. leg up. I showed him. But, uh, yeah. What yeah, is the tattoo, was, see? It's, it's, the, it's his face. That's awesome. Yeah. How, how yeah. is that, like, if you show someone that you have a tattoo of their face on you and you've never met them, are they scared or flattered? He was flattered. He was, you okay. know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think I don't. I think that he's probably seen that a bunch, though. It's fucking Bo Jackson, because, like, yeah, he inspired millions of fucking kids. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so I'm, I'm sure he's seen a Bo Jackson tattoo before. Well, let me ask you this. If you, let's say, let's say, um, I'm trying to think of, like, a young athlete. All right. Let's say you meet Jonathan Kuminga. And he has a CC Sabathia tattoo on his quad, <laughs> your, your face. Are you feeling, are you feeling like that sick? Like that dude's oh, like no, my that, guy or are you creeped it. out? No, that's it. That's okay. it. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm just making sure. Yeah, now, yeah. now, how about you're at a random event at PC Richard and Son for <laughs> two hours on a Saturday morning and some random fan comes up to you with a with a tattoo of your face on their thigh. Now, nah, how are we feeling about that one? No, nah, I mean, I think anytime somebody gets a tattoo of you, it's fire. You know what I'm okay, saying? All right, like all right. that you, yeah. you you completely like and completely inspired by that person. You know okay. what I'm saying? And yes. that's what, and that's what my tattoos are on my leg. It's Big E, it's my cousin, it's Mac Dre, it's uh Satchel Page and Bo Jackson. The, you it's know, pretty, it, it kind of makes up who I am. All those people. Sounds like it'd be a great dinner party. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good. If I was going to get the tattoo of like someone famous on me, I don't know who it would be. Like, I, I feel like I'd get Darth Vader, but that's not a real person. Yeah. You know? Would like, it be? I, would it be like Vince Scully? You know, <laughs> it, that's a, I appreciate no, that you suggestion. Know, you know what it would be? It would be Andy Pettit, guys. Yeah, it would. What am I talking yeah, about? Of course it would be Andy. It'd be Andy Pettit. But what, how do you think Andy would take that if I showed up? Oh, like, he'd be at this weirded point? out. Andy yeah, would be I'm weirded saying. out. Yeah, that's Andy would saying, be weirded man. out. Yeah. Like, I, but, I, but Andy's weirded out by everything now. Yeah. Like, that's just him. <laughs> it's funny because I think, like, Andy's so great to me. But I, but it's funny because, like, I, I got enough in his consciousness from how much I'm on Yes that like he knows me, you know, he knows who I am. And then obviously through you and we've done pods with him and everything else. And like when I see him at the stadium or wherever, he's like, he's just so great to me. Um, but I got to think there's some part of him that knows like I, I was obsessed with him playing. Like he has to, some part of him has to know like, oh yeah, like that's Ryan. Oh yeah, Ryan, Ryan's like fandom for me. It's a little, <laughs> nah, I don't, <laughs> a, I don't you think, don't think you so? know that. Nah, no? I mean, because okay. I, well, like, now he does. I don't even think even I mean, even when you say that, if you don't yeah. act weird when you're around the person, That's then they true. never and pick I up don't. on that shit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah. if you don't if you don't act weird around them, then yeah. they won't ever really know that. But I mean, you can say that all you want. Yeah. And, and but but long as you don't act weird around them, then it's fine. That's true. And I don't act weird around Andy. He but you know, what's nice. Like he was I, I, I think I told you this. And maybe I've told the story on the pod before when I. When he retired and I was like, I was on a flight following his final game, that complete game he threw in Houston. And I literally what had year a moment was where that? I was like, I won't. That was 20. What year did he retire? 2014? 20, 2014. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, no. Tw no. Cause 13? Thir 13, right? Because Derek was 14. So, right? Derek was 14. And I think yeah. Andy was 13. Okay. I think. Remember, Andy had retired, come back, but it he was retired. 13. He retired in 2010. 
Yes, and after then he 10. Came, yep. And he came back in 12. And yep. he remember, he was, he was dealing. He was going to make the All-Star team, and he broke his leg. Yep, yep. And that, that was exactly. 2012. Yep, and then so he pitched just, in 13. I just didn't know if he pitched one, two more years or one more year. Yeah, he pitched... Um, he pitched. He pitched like another because remember he came a little late, so and it was like another year and a half. Thir- we sucked in thirteen. Like we were terrible. Well, do you remember that lineup you guys put out? It was like, oh, uh, it I was mean, I remember. Th- I remember that last game. I remember like Mark Reynolds was in that lineup. It yeah. was like it was. It was that team was not good. Crazy, yeah. Thirteen. Uh, to just confirm, for thirteen for Pettit. Um, and uh, and by the way, uh, and C- and Sadie, what a great. See, I've mentioned the team. How great are they? Sadie texts me, Jeter 14, Atta uh, Pettit 13. So, no. yeah, dude, um, I remember looking at some of those lineups, like they did side-by-sides in recent years, and it's like, whoa. The yeah. teams you put out there, it was some, whoa. It was some bad. I remember what that, one of those years had to be 13 or 14. We were, like, it had to be 14 because I didn't play in 14. I had uh, surgery. Remember, I was out all year. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But uh, I remember we went on a road trip. And we came yeah. back, and it was a completely fucking different team. <laughs> it was like Rich Hill. It was like all these different guys like I had never seen before on the team. It was crazy. Remember, like, there was a while where, like, the Yankees became the, like, can we revive a veteran for three months squad? You know, oh, like, can my we, God. what, what can we squeeze Roberts, out of Raul Mondesi? Yeah, 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 yeah Brian yeah. Roberts. It yeah, was like, yeah, yeah, it was exactly. crazy, man. It, it was, was crazy. crazy. Soriano. You know, Sorry, he came Sorry back. Sorry, actually came back actually and played, played well though. He played he pretty did. good. Yeah. He did. He came back and balled that one year. Sorry was my guy, man. I, I love Sorry. Alfonso Sorry. You want to talk about Jack? Sorry's fucking Jack right now. Is he really? Oh my god! I just saw him at Moe's uh, golf event last week. Jack. So that happened post playing because he was like kind of he was skinny lanky playing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's like you. He decided to get jacked after he stopped playing. Yeah, just off of yeah, the looks. Well. Hey, man, I understand. You want to be shirtless on your birthday. That's your goal. <laughs> <laughs> Every year in the summer. Every um, year. See, so uh, I um, I don't know where we got with all this, but so how was Bo? How was the interaction? Was he was he kind? Was he good to talk to? Is no, he coming on the pod? What's going yeah, on? No, he was good. He was good. Um, you know, just having a chance to talk to him, chop it up, talk about the game, you know, talk about him, talking about sports. It was It was good. We can definitely get him on the pod. I don't think I think he's uh he's in. You know, I got his number. You know oh, what I'm nice. Saying? So so it's good. I mean, I definitely can hit him up and see if he wants to come on the pod. I think it'll be good. I think it'd be yeah. fun. He's got some great stories. Oh, I think it'd be unbelievable. It, it, what's crazy is like just the casual nature, right? If you would have told I don't know twelve year old CC Sabathia he's gonna get Bo Jackson's phone number, man. Like right? Yeah. Like, yeah. No. And and. <laughs> To be honest, 12-year-old CC is about to be with him. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm going to play for the Raiders. So he's going to be my teammate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. But no, just way. sitting back, sitting back and, and, you know, having a chance, like, like I mean, just to have that interaction. I, like I said, I mean, I've been waiting 30 years to meet that guy, you know? So mm. um, it was cool, man. It was it was dope. It, today, was, today was a good day. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. And then yesterday was a great day because... Derek Jeter, the captain, the other, the, the North Star of my adolescent decision making and the consciousness of all Yankee fans of my generation. And I would say the guy right behind Andrew Eugene Pettit for me in my favorite players of all time. Uh, he joined Twitter and Instagram, man. I am shocked that this dude joined any kind of social media. I thought he was going to be Vito Corleone for his entire life with this stuff. <laughs> uh, nah, I knew. I mean, he's got the dot coming out. He's got a lot of different things going on, and um, it just makes sense. It's perfect timing. You know, it's, I think it's going to be a big summer for him. So, he, but let me tell you something. He, that motherfucker definitely don't have t- like Twitter or Instagram on his phone. You no. know what I'm saying? Like somebody's definitely running that shit for him. He definitely don't have the, those apps in his phone. No, a thousand percent, no chance. He he's not gonna be like checking the random DMs to see what people say. He ain't checking no DMs, people. So don't don't <laughs> be sending no bullshit. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> don't try it. It's it, it is kind of cool though because it's funny because he's someone like why I'm so interested in the doxy. I mean, first of all, Derek Jeter for me was like if I was gonna say outside of my uh, my parents, like my mom and my dad have always been my role models. But right after them, if I was going to pick someone, it was Derek Jeter. Yeah, I really looked at him as a role model. I thought, you know, the security with which he handled himself, 
the grace, the competitive fire, the desire to win, the polite nature, which I got to witness firsthand in a variety of different capacities. Um, I always, for me, he was a role model. He still is to some degree. Like I think about things and think, you know, how would Derek Jeter handle this? And so any insight into him, the person with how careful he's been, see, I find fascinating. Even if he's not going to, during the doc, drop bombs, any sort of like insight. And you know, there's going to be at least more than we've ever gotten before. Yeah. Makes it super interesting to me. And I can't wait for that to come out July 18th on uh, ESPN. Hey, you know, it's crazy. All those reasons why you just name why you like him is why I hated him before I knew him. Really? <laughs> yeah, like, because nobody's that fucking perfect. You know what I'm mm. saying? And when yeah. I got a chance to meet him, I was like, oh, no, that's like, that's just like what he wants you guys to see. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You were like, like, oh, no, he's not that perfect, but I get yeah, <laughs> but so, so it made me like, lo like, like him and love him even more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know how close we are now. Yeah. I didn't I didn't anticipate that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that we would be as close as we are. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm excited for people to see the doc too, so they can hopefully get some real insight into the real him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He is our uh, first podcast guest ever, see? Yeah, yeah. Like, he, he is, we, he was. And and he's he's funny, man. Like he's got funny oh. stories. He's good, like he's got a great personality. So I just want people to see that side of him instead of the, you know careful and calculated side of, of Derek. I can't share exact content um, because that would be going outside the bounds. But I can say when you guys won in Minnesota and I got to be a part of your in, in the, in 09, the ALDS game three, 09. when you swept them. Yeah. And you guys had to stay overnight or you, or the just snow, decided the snow to snow night. No, it was yeah, snowing, yeah. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. Snowing. Right. And I was staying anyway, cause I was flying commercial. I wasn't flying with you guys. Jason Zillow, the outstanding uh, PR director for the Yankees, he invited uh, Pete Gurgley and me to your guys' party in the because uh, we were part of the team at that point. You know, as far as in-house production goes, at the ball that ballroom in Minnesota at the hotel. Mm -hmm. And first of all, it's one of the greatest nights of my life. I had so much fun, and for me, just getting into the business, and I'm around this, you know, all these Yankees. And I remember, like, at one point, like I got a really good taste of Derek's humor. And I, and then I saw it subsequently for years, but that night, like kind of made me appreciate like just how funny he is and, yeah. and the way he thinks. And I was like, Oh, all right. I see it. Like I, I totally get it. We and then I got to see night, it a little man. more. We party oh, yeah. hard that night. We partied hard that whole year, bro. To be honest, yeah. like we, yeah, we went hard. Like, like just thinking about like a rod's party and, you know, that party in Minnesota and like a couple of nights we just had, we would go out all of us together. It's crazy. What was it? A-Rod's was a 4th of July or Memorial a -Rod's Day? A-Rod's party or? was, it, it was just his birthday. His birthday's the end of July. I think it's oh, like July yeah, yeah. 24th or 25th or something like that. And he had a party mm -hmm. out in uh, in Rye where he was renting his house. And that mm -hmm. was the night when everybody jumped in the pool and shit. You heard that yeah. story about, yeah, that yeah. was that night. Yeah, and, that, was, and that, that was an epic, crazy fucking party. <laughs> crazy party bro those are obviously uh massive happenings over the last couple of days you meeting bo jackson the captain joining twitter and instagram by the way we're going to try and get Derek on at some point around the dock he's obviously having to do a ton of press uh in advance of that i'm sure that him joining twitter and instagram with this timing it's no coincidence in advance of the dock uh but we're going to do our best to try and get the uh, el capitan back on so uh look forward to that See, um, I'd ask people on Instagram for, you know, with the Yankee rain out tonight and everything going on, if they had any questions for us. And, and I got a lot of good questions. And, and one of the things I just want to shout out these people because I, um, I just want to show love. But like a lot of people wanted to know what we can do to convince you to watch Obi-Wan now instead of waiting because it's that good man man and everybody uh d text me he was like man they put two episodes out and you know yes. you know what I, I had it i had it downloaded for my flight this weekend but i never yeah. i never watched it i just oh man I, I, maybe i'll wait like two more weeks and then i'll have well, four episodes i'm gonna tell you right now they released episode three today so they they released two on last friday and they released now they're going to be releasing on Thursdays uh, moving forward. Jen Parrish was one of the people who wanted to know about this. And then someone else said, how do we get you to, to now? Oh, uh, uh, Chef Resnick then asked, what would it take to make CC watch Kenobi now instead of waiting? The show's amazing. They put out the third episode today. See, I'm going to say this right now. 
it could be <laughs> it could be the best 40 minutes of Star Wars content they have put out since Disney bought Lucasfilm. And and I think highly of everything they wow. put out. Wow. I, but that's how good episode three of Obi Wan is. I'm not gonna lie, D, yeah. and D's been on me. My cousin D, uh, he's he been was on DMing me. me about it. He's been yeah. on me about watching yeah. it. So I mean, I may have to get into it because we'll you can because you can see weekend. three in a row. You can see three in a row right now. You know, you can see three in a row right now. So I mean, yeah. that's not that's not nothing. No, nah, that's not that's not. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. may have to get into it this. You know what? I, I may have to get into it this weekend, man. We'll if, see. if you do, I want you to put me and D on a text chain. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it's, it is sensational. Um, C, how about these finals, man? How, how, uh, how are you feeling about your Warriors? I'm excited about the Warriors being back in the finals, but I wanted Miami to win that game seven, bro, because I think, I think people don't understand how good Boston, I think, matches up with the Warriors. I, me personally. I just think their defense, their length, I think, you know, being able to to have to throw multiple guys at Steph, I think, you know, Robert Williams the third in the paint, and being able to to you know, that motherfucker blocked shots. He jumped from the paint and blocked three pointers, cuz. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he's so long, cuz it's yeah. just disruptive, and they all are. So yeah. I just, I mean, I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna go seven games, and I think Steph is gonna have to like really go off in a couple games for them to win. Do you think he will? I hope so. I do. And I, I mean, everybody keeps saying for his legacy, for his legacy. His legacy is already fucking sealed, cemented, all of that shit. I don't want to hear nothing about Steph's legacy. But I mean, I think if if, if I think he's going to have to for them to win the finals. And I think he will. Hey, look at this. I mean, Steph has taken three different incarnations of, of this the, team to the, to finals. the finals. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously it's it's Steph and it's Draymond and it's Clay for sure. But obviously Steph is the best player of those guys. Um, and I I mean that that trio, it it's not dissimilar, see, to what we saw from the Yankees core, where yeah. it's like you had right, you had different, like, okay, Kevin Durant's there, CC Sabathia's there, but wow, you know, Derek Jeter, Andy Pettit, Mariano Rivera, Jorge Posada are still key contributors, right? Like Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Clay Thompson are still key contributors. And, and saying that is underselling, you know, the impact of, of everybody. But, but yeah, man, I mean, I, look, for me, his legacy is set. People, I don't understand why people like to ever needle or dig at Steph. He's like the kindest, most likable dude on the planet, man. Yeah. And you know what, too? It's just like a, a franchise that has been historically bad until they got there. You yeah, know what I'm right, saying? Like, right. They get points for that too because I grew up in that area and the war and the Warriors fucking suck, bro. Until yeah. they got there, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, that 07 team kind of started it with yeah. with you know St uh, Stephen Jackson and Al Harrington and Baron Davis and all those dudes. But like this dynasty and this and this dominance that they've had over the NBA is has has started kind of from scratch with them and Mark Jackson and you know them, them putting that team together. So I think I think he has to get a lot of credit too for taking a, a franchise that has never really won to, mm -hmm. to, to crazy heights. You know what I'm saying? Moving them out of Oakland, getting them a new arena in San Francisco. Like, that's all because of what they've been able to do and what Steph's been able to do for that franchise. Hey, Howard Beck wrote a great story for Sports Illustrated about how, I mean, and the headline and the cover was like, calling Steph the greatest shooter of all time is actually underselling him. Mm -hmm. And I agree with that. Like, when people just focus on his shooting, they are missing... What happens? J.J. Redick has done a wonderful job of breaking this down on ESPN over the past week. Steph, the, the gravitational pull of Steph Curry on the offensive end is second to no one mm -hmm. in the history of basketball. You cannot measure his impact on that end of the floor. And by the way, he competes and is competent defensively as well, which is all but, you need when you're that much of a star on the offensive end. And I'm probably right, but, underselling his D a little. But 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 even but not even like at the NBA level, he he's affected the offense. It's grassroots, cuz. You know you're what right. I'm saying? Like you're you right. got fucking AAU teams shooting 33s a game because of what this guy has done or did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like he cha he fundamentally changed the whole fucking game, cuz. Yes. Like they play basketball differently because of Steph Curry. 
hundred percent. And it's funny because if you like, if you you've met Steph or you get to know Steph or whatever, or you're just around him, you see him up close, and you realize like this dude is still six two, six three, very put together. Like he's a super muscular dude, very toned. But because he's playing amongst giants to young kids, he looks like someone they can be, right? Yeah, so they yeah. they watch his game. It's below the rim. He's not the biggest dude, and they're like, hey. If Steph Curry can do that, I can do that. And there's something wonderful about that because as incredible as it is to watch Giannis or LeBron or KD or Nikola Jokic or whoever you choose, like we all know that it takes certain physical gifts to have the template to be what they are, right? Mm -hmm. and, and with Steph, it's it takes it takes gifts too, but there's some there's a it's probably it's a it's a misconception, but it exists where kids look at him and they say like, oh, like that's something I can do, you mm -hmm. know? And and there's something beautiful about that and the way it inspires a generation uh, to play the game. Yeah, and for me, you know, I've always talked about this, like him being a legacy and, 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 a, and a, you know, a player's kid, like it's fun for me to be able to see that and watching, you know, little Drew and, you know, Jackson Holiday and even like little C, you know, yeah. it gives them like something to, to look at. Clay Thompson, you know, these guys. Yeah. You know, they grew up around the game, in the game, and you never really see, you know, those players, like, become great. Like, they, you know, Ken Griffey Jr. and Barry Bonds are two, but, like, other than that, you don't really see guys that, you know, grow up in the game become the, the greatest players in the game. And to be able to have that for this generation and for, for guys to look up to, I think is awesome. I agree, man. And I, like, I just want to say, I think I've, I've said this before on the pod, but it, it, it's worth noting because, obviously, you know, we have unique perspective because we have unique access, right? You have a certain level of access because of playing and your credentials and, and your accomplishments, obviously. And then me, because of, you know, getting to broadcast games and be around different people. Steph Curry is as kind and accountable a superstar as I have ever come across in the NBA. And I think I've told you this story before, but, you know, when we do national games. There are so many stars that don't sit down with us. You know, it used to be yeah. like when Michael Jordan, when MB NBA on NBC came, Michael Jordan would sit down every single national TV game with the crew. You know, Hubie Brown would come in and, you know, you know, who, whoever, Dick Stockton, whoever's, whoever's Amai, doing the game. Because it was a Ma Rashad too, though. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, but for sure. But MJ would always sit down, you know, and, and that's the way it used to be when you go to a national TV game. Now, granted, there's a million national TV games now, so it's a little different. But a lot of these stars, they don't give us one game a year, okay? I'm not going to name names and dime people out, but... Well, you might as well start of, naming names, guys. Well, I mean, just think of, like, almost every <laughs> big star, every big star you could think of. Like, they just don't they just don't sit down with us. Guys who do, Giannis does, okay? Giannis always does. Um, and Steph. Steph always does, always. And what's crazy about Steph is, like, usually... You know, a guy might do if he did, let's say ESPN at games like, you know, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, like you maybe are only going to ask Steph once. And usually we're conscious of that. But if something comes up where it's like, man, kind of need Steph Wednesday, Friday and Saturday, whatever, he'll sit down for all of them like he never says no. And that's just so appreciated as a broadcast partner. Right. But it also allows you to get to know the guy, like the guy, appreciate him. And he, he always remembers everyone's name. Granted, my name is also, you know, his daughter's name, but he, he could not be, he could not be kinder. He's such an easy dude to root for. I'll say this, see, I, watching Celtics Heat, I thought whoever lost that series was going to get trounced by the Warriors. I feel a little differently now because of the way the Celtics match up, kind of what you were talking about. I'm telling you, know? you, bro, they match up really, really fucking good with the Warriors, guys. But I still think, I still think, ultimately, Golden State, will win. I do too. I just think it's going to be harder than people think. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I and, agree and, with that. And, and, and honestly, I, 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 I'm, I, the only reason I'm confident about the Warriors is because they got to play game seven at, at the chase. Yeah. In, in, uh, in uh, San Francisco. If that yeah. shit was in Boston, it, it's a toss-up. Let me tell you, man, calling the uh, closeout game against Memphis at Chase Center, one of the uh, in second round, one of the coolest experiences hey, of my career, man. That was crazy. We are an underrated fucking fan base, like, as fans out in the Bay. You know what I'm saying? Like, like whether it's the Sharks or the Niners or when the mm. Raiders were there or 
fucking the 3,000 people that show up to that nasty ass stadium in fucking Oakland to watch the A's. Like, you have <laughs> Those to get them people, are hard. You got to get them motherfuckers man. credit, cuz they hardcore <laughs> out there beating that goddamn drum with nobody out there, cuz. So you got to <laughs> give them some credit, bro. Like, there's some real fucking sports fans up there, cuz. <laughs> Can I just say how rich this is coming from you when you say you got to give us some credit? You got to give dude, us some credit, cuz. The dude who, who, who bailed on the Warriors to root for the Nets and then jump back. Nah, uh, I jumped back Kyrie right, didn't get vaccinated. right at the right time, cuz. You yeah, see well, how I go I, back and forth? I agree with you. I, I understand that. All right, see, let's take. So we're both picking the Warriors. I'm going to I'm gonna pick the Warriors in five. Oof, I don't know about that because you're tripping. Mm, let's see. What are you you're picking the Warriors in seven? <laughs> yep. Also, I want to poke some fun at ourselves and some accountability. We still have not completely settled uh, the way we're pivoting with the Super Bowl bet. I, I want to make clear to the audience, we have the records of that. We know our winner who's and going I, to get the I, autographed cleats. I have to do a, a, a game, right, or something? Well, that's what we were going to do. Yeah, we were going to do a game as long as John Filippelli said it was okay. No, but then you, you got to s- come on a clubhouse game. That's all we okay. said. Okay, I would do that. I yeah. would gladly come on with you. For By a the game. way, I'm, I'm fucking yeah. doing a pre and post game for the Peacock game this weekend. Are you really? Yeah. Look at you, man. Yeah, sideline reporting. So you're gonna have to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give me like a little Manila folder, like like you. Where where is a Yankee game? Yeah, it better be a fucking Yankee game. I ain't traveling. Oh. I'm here this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a okay. Yankees. Tig- it's a Yankees Tigers game. Okay, all right, yeah. nice man. Oh, I'm yeah. gonna check that out. I can't wait to see that, dude. Pre and that post, cuz. Oh, that's awesome. So I'm, I'm gonna do the you, pregame. Man. I'm gonna do the pregame. I'm gonna go in Robbie's office, take a nap for the whole game, and then do the postgame. Fucking. <laughs> Have someone I, fill you in on what happened? Not watch more. Oh pitch. my gosh, man. <laughs> oh. Dude, that is hilarious, man. I can't wait to see that. Yeah. Who are you? Do you know who you're working with? Absolutely not. Okay, well, good. Um, <laughs> can't wait to see how it goes. Are you nervous? <laughs> for what? You I talk don't about know. fucking baseball? No. All right, good. I'm glad. I'm, you I'm nervous. I'm nervous they got, they're not gonna let me on set when they see what I show up when I'm fucking wearing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous about that. Well, they probably won't. Other than that, I mean if we're gonna be good. Oh my gosh. Let's take a few fan questions before we get out of here. Uh go Yanks Go, Yanks fan three three four five says, oh. How pumped are you and CC for the new Game of Thrones series? Yeah, when is that? July, right? Is it is it that soon? I think so. I think it's I think Ooh. it's the summer. I mean I'm wow. bro, now that I'm traveling a lot again, I'm back on the TV. Like it's a good. lot of a lot of good shows out there. You gotta get on the offer. Which which uh system is that on? Paramount Plus. I've been telling you for for oh, two yeah. months, I, Paramount I, Plus. I, I swear, you know how crazy it is with the way they listen in on everything? <laughs> as soon as we talked about Paramount Plus on it the popped pod, up on your Instagram. Oh, yeah, I got a ton, a ton of ad- ads from Paramount Plus. Like, we have to know, nothing is private. These, these people are in on everything. They know everything, everything. going on. That's just going to pop up on my phone right now. Oh, 100% <laughs> it is. Of course it is. Uh, by the way, Atta tells us August 21st oh. for House of, the House of the Dragon. August 21st. Sick. That's, that's going to be sick, yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, this is, oh, Michael Kaplan and a couple other people said, hey, what about hockey? You know, I have to say, I, you know, you know, I'm only like a peripheral hockey fan. Our boy Brian Axelrod is a massive hockey fan, big massive Islander fan. fan yeah. I'm an Islander fan too. But I will say, even as being an Islander fan, because I'm not like a diehard, um, I appreciate the Rangers being deep in the playoffs and what it does that, for the city. That's all you New Yorkers, bro. You all like you talk shit about me hopping back on bandwagons and shit. But if the Mets were in the in the World Series, you'd be like, oh, it's good for the city. You, no, all you fucking New Yorkers just jump on whatever team is doing. Whatever team is doing well in the city, but, you guys just fucking bandwagon. Well, and you always give me, you got, or the whole fucking group chat gives me shit about fucking jumping teams all the time. But you motherfuckers go from the Knicks to the Nets to the well, fucking I, Mets, the Yankees. It's the whole fucking city for everybody here. I will say this. I think that 99.9% of Islander fans do not feel like what I just said at all. They that, hate the Rangers. No, they I don't hate, think so. Oh, they hate the Rangers. Islander fans, Ranger fans, 
tweet it at CC underscore Sabathia at R2C2 with how much New you Yorkers, hate each other. I think all New Yorkers are fucking bandwagon guys. No, dude, no way. They <laughs> they hate each other. And hate. you just cut out, so I can't even hear what you're saying anyway, so it don't matter. What is, go- <laughs> what is going on? I, I, I swear, when, I yank, when I yank on my headphones, you can't hear me. All, all the... I'm telling you, Islander fans and Ranger fans hate each other. And, dude, the Knicks and Nets have that now, too. I don't think they're rooting for each other if they're out. I think they're rooting for the other one to get eliminated as quick as possible. Eh, That's what I think. That's what I think. Um, All right, let me see if I got one or two more. Oh, have you ever attempted what's the closest we've gotten to getting our dream guest on the podcast? You know, mine has been Eminem, and yours is Will Smith. Yeah, well, I mean, I think we're going to have a tough time getting my, my dream guest on now. Oh, that's true. It got a lot harder for us. It got you a lot harder to, for what, us. What a, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after the Oscars, it got a lot harder. Got a lot harder what for us. We got a better chance to get Chris Rock on this motherfucker well, than, than Will Smith. I, I'm just going to say, if we really want to make big headlines going into this next <laughs> stage of R2C2, he's your neighbor. Why don't we do it? It'd be a totally like, you know, for him, it'd be an obscure platform to go do this tell all. Doesn't have to be a red table talk. Come on, R two C two. It doesn't have to be a red <laughs> table talk. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be terrific. What I if think he went on be... red table talk? Guys? Like that oh. shit would be crazy. It, it, you know what he should do? I'll tell you what he should do. He should go on red table talk and sell, sell like whatever the rights to the shirt he's wearing. Okay, and he should he should get a fifteen million dollar deal to wear a you know. Uh, 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 a Nabisco or uh, 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 an almond milk or a, I don't care what you, what, what kind of food, what kind of company, a Mountain Dew, uh, a, a Coke, a Pepsi, uh, whatever it is, like you pick, you pick the product. I don't know why. I think I just named random things in my fridge, uh, but you pick the product or the company. He wears a t-shirt of that. Fifteen millions the fee for him to go on Red Table Talk wearing that T-shirt. NFT. That should be the deal. And, and then you get an NFT. NFT. Yeah, and then you sell the T. Right, you sell the shirt on top of that for an additional fifteen million. It's a thirty million dollar interview for Chris Rock. I love it. I think we've solved the world's problems. If, here if we today. can offer him that, we can get him on R2C2 too. You got that? <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what. Some other we could bring in a third party <laughs> advertiser and tell him, Chris, we've secured this much money if you wear this T-shirt on R2C2. <laughs> Right? I think he might we could. do it. He might do it. We don't have the built in audience, maybe quite of Red Table Talk, but if he comes on, that thing is going to do millions upon millions uh, upon millions upon crazy. millions of views. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that's what we're going to work on. See, this has been a delightfully fun episode. Um, uh, we will do it again next week. We're going to keep it going. It's the same feed for everybody. New episodes every Thursday. Bonus episodes as well. Make sure you're following us on Instagram, Twitter, at R2C2. Make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube page. The full episodes are going up there right away, okay? So make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube page. Uh, Big shout out to Sadie Zillow, Atta, Jackson Safon, who uh, stepped in to help us out with the engineering and producing. We appreciate him. Um, And uh, see I'll see you next week, man. Peace. Yeah, yeah, peace. Now, I got to give one shout out to Lil oh, C. Oh, do it. He, Lil yeah, C do graduates it. high school on Saturday. Uh, oh, so I'm ex- man. Yeah, excited for him, man. He's, uh, you know, he's, he's uh, high school playoffs, baseball right now. He graduates high school on Saturday, taking off at the, in the middle of the month to go down to Georgia Tech. So I'm just excited for, you know, him on his next journey and, and uh, you know, his next step in life. So we're excited as a family. Got a bunch of people coming in this weekend, so it should be a good weekend. That's amazing. Big congratulations to Lil C. That is so awesome. Will you be crying at the graduation, C? Oh, man, I'm definitely going to be crying. Bro, he did this Champs ad, so he's like in the national. Like, he's in every Champs across the country. And they wow. had it up in, in the uh, Times Square in the billboard, and I saw it and started crying. That's like, beautiful, man. That is crazy. beautiful. So, yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's exciting, uh, you know, what he's got going on. And, and uh, like I said, it should be a good weekend with the family. And look forward to getting back on the pod next week. Amen, man. Congrats to Lil C. That's an awesome story about the ad, and we will talk to you guys next week. Peace, everybody. Peace.